Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. Greensboro City Council approved a contract with Housing Consultants Group to provide counseling services to help families become homeowners as well as assist existing homeowners with maintaining their homes. Housing Consultants Group is a member of the Housing Hub. Along with the city, the agency will provide homebuyer education, counseling before and after the purchase, foreclosure mitigation, and homeowner maintenance education. Homebuyer education and pre-purchase counseling are requirements of the city's Housing Connect GSO program. Housing Connect GSO launched in June 2018 and links homebuyers, homeowners, and city partners through education, counseling, financial assistance, and collaborations to ensure successful homeownership. The program also includes revised down payment and closing cost assistance for first-time home buyers and those who want to purchase a home in a redevelopment area within the city. The counseling contract with Housing Consultants Group will help more residents take advantage of Housing Connect GSO and become homeowners. Housing Consultants Group is approved by the U.S. Housing and Urban Development. The Greensboro Police Department says online classified ads are growing in popularity for legitimate buyers and sellers as well as criminals who have no intention of buying or selling anything. For sellers, the ads, which are usually free, can reach a wide audience in a short period of time. For buyers, online ads allow them to find an assortment of items and compare prices. For criminals, finding ads posted on sites such as Craigslist, LetGo, and OfferUp provide another means for them to commit crimes. They use these online ads as a way to lure people who have money or property worth stealing. Criminals know buyers will likely show up with cash, which makes them an easy target. Because of the risks involved with these transactions, Greensboro Police continue to encourage people to make the exchange at a police station or a trusted public place. Police recommend for you to arrive at the meeting place before the other person so you can observe their behavior. Bring someone with you or let someone know where you're going and who you're meeting. If something doesn't feel right, follow your instincts and leave the area immediately. Brown Recreation Center welcomes volunteers throughout the year to help with planting and maintaining Ivy Garden. This is the center's community garden located at 302 East Vandalia Road. No gardening experience is necessary. Simply come out and learn from others or share your gardening skills if you happen to have a green thumb. This community garden is offered in partnership with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. If you would like to volunteer, please call the Brown Recreation Center at 336-373-2920. Many items in your home, such as pesticides, may contain hazardous materials and cannot be disposed of in a landfill or recycling facility. Residents should bring these items to the city's household hazardous waste collection center at 2750 Patterson Street. The service is free and this ensures the safe disposal of toxic items. To learn more about this program and what items are accepted, visit the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov slash hhw. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Probably one in three Americans, or 70 million people, has hypertension, and up to 50% of those patients are either not treated or undertreated. One in five may not even know they have the diagnosis. I'm Dr. Jay Cochrane. I'm a cardiologist. I'm the chief of the Cone Health Cardiovascular Service Line and Cone Health Medical Group Heart Care. Hypertension really is known as the silent killer and it's because it doesn't cause a lot of symptoms. You really have to get a blood pressure check. The nice thing about that is getting a blood pressure check and getting screened for hypertension is probably one of the easiest things we do. I mean, you can get a blood pressure checked at any primary care office, at any appointment with just about any provider, at the community health fair. So what is a normal blood pressure? Well, typically we treat people for hypertension when the blood pressure is 
140 over 90. Although it's a little bit different what we consider normal based on your age and based on whether you have other conditions such as diabetes. We would begin to treat blood pressure at that level, 140 over 90, typically. What is normal might be more like 120 over 80. And in between is what we call prehypertension, where we begin to pay attention to the risk factors. Patients don't know that they have hypertension because one, they may not see a doctor, or uh, two, they may have been told they had high blood pressure at some point in time, but they really didn't pay much attention to it. We see those patients later on when they present with some of the problems that occur with untreated hypertension. We'd like to get to them long before that point. The problems they present with might be heart failure, kidney failure, or even strokes. And all of that is potentially treatable, preventable if they get diagnosis and treatment early. So the question is, how can we prevent or treat hypertension? At times, your physician may diagnose you with hypertension, and you may need medical management from the beginning. But in all situations, your provider should also be suggesting therapeutic lifestyle changes, or what I like to call TLC. I think the bottom line is that we need to reduce our salt intake, we need to reduce our sugar intake, we should be going for more complex carbohydrates and for trying to avoid the foods that turn quickly into sugars. And I often tell people that's the white breads and the white rices and the white potatoes. And what's really, really important about weight loss and hypertension is that it doesn't take a lot. That we can see reduction in blood pressure from 5 to 10 pounds. And sometimes the reward for losing weight is you actually get to come down or even off of your medications. We should limit our alcohol intake. There's great discussion about the potential merits of something like red wine. The bottom line is that too much daily alcohol consumption is unhealthy for a number of reasons. And one of those is it can lead to uh, difficult to control hypertension. It is a problem. Um, it is a difficult addiction for a lot of people, and it is something that people should concentrate on. And try to find help. Talk with your doctor about the best methods, the best resources for stopping smoking. Another therapeutic lifestyle change that's important and that's recommended for blood pressure control is to increase your activity level. And that's critical for so many different health problems. We don't exercise enough as a country. It's estimated that only about or less than 25% of adults get the recommended amount of physical exercise on a weekly basis. We should get about 150 minutes a week of a moderate level of exercise. And a moderate level of exercise is something that makes you a little flushed or a little short of breath, but not something that is so physically exerting that a, you're not enjoying it, or B, you can't do it the next day. For instance, I tell patients if you're walking with somebody, you should be walking at a brisk enough pace that you wouldn't have enough breath to sing, but you would be able to carry on a conversation. This is Dr. Jake Hochrein. Thank you for letting me join you today. I hope this information was helpful. Cone Health is committed to your wellness. For more information, please go to conehealth.com slash heart. If you're thinking about a career change or you've wondered what is required to be a member of the Greensboro Police Department, the agency hires year-round. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Greensboro Police Department hires throughout the year if you or someone you know is interested in a career in law enforcement. The starting salary is more than $38,000. Recruit training is an intense 25-week program that includes high academic performance in areas such as law, human relations, first aid, firearms, driver training, defensive tactics, and modern law enforcement techniques. 
The academy also includes daily rigorous physical activities such as weight training and aerobics. Police trainees must successfully complete all topical areas and the state comprehensive examination. Sworn status is conferred upon successful completion of the Greensboro Police Department Academy and the state examination administered by the North Carolina Criminal Justice Education and Training Standards Commission. To apply for the Police Academy, visit the city's I Apply system to set up an online account or call the recruiting hotline. More city services can be paid online in addition to water bills and parking tickets. Residents can now go online and click on the tab entitled Pay Your Miscellaneous Invoice. Options for online payments include false alarms, code enforcement violations, monthly parking deck fees, fire violation inspections, landfill charges, daycare facility fees, and more. An invoice qualifies as miscellaneous if the invoice is sent by the City of Greensboro and reads miscellaneous invoice City of Greensboro at the top center of the invoice. These invoices can still be paid in person at the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street or at the Kitchen Operations Center located at 2602 South Elm Eugene Street and by mail at P.O. Box 3136, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27402. The GSO Collects app offers more options allowing residents to report problems such as potholes or overgrown lawns. The free app is available for Apple and Android mobile devices. GSO Collects informs residents about everything they need to know about the city's residential recycling and trash collection operations and when changes are made to the schedule. In addition to that, residents can also report problems to the City of Greensboro via the Tool tab. Just click on the icon that resembles a wrench and a hammer. Select the I Have Another Problem option to report issues such as abandoned vehicles, graffiti, litter or illegal dumping, malfunctioning streetlights or traffic signals, missing or damaged road signs, overgrown lawns, and potholes. This new function of the GSO Collects app replaces the Fix It app previously used by the city. Residents are also able to report problems to the contact center by either calling 336-373-2489, sending an email, or through live support. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. Let's take a look at today's community contributor. Nate Alston has traveled the world sharing his gift for music and theater, but you've probably seen some of his best and most personal work, the musicals he has penned, right here at the Barn Dinner Theater. The Greensboro native spent his childhood studying theater and singing. He was only a few months out of high school when his talent landed him the spot as the front man for Stan Stiggles Sound Express, a top 40 show band that traveled around the country playing bars and corporate gigs. When Nate was back in town, he performed with the Livestock Players and the Rasmataz Musical Theater Company. In 1997, his community theater performance of The Lion in the Wiz caught the attention of Mabel Robeson of the North Carolina Black Repertory Company. She asked him to audition for her production of Glory of the Gospel. He got the part, and soon Nate was performing on an international stage, spending three years with a professional musical theater in Europe. He eventually landed back home at the Barn Dinner Theater, where Nate became a writer, director, choreographer, and composer, beginning with his show, Love Machine, the Musical. The Motown and Soul Showcase was so well received, they added two more months to the show run. It became the highest pre-selling show in the history of the theater and its most requested production. This holiday season, Nate will perform with Greensboro Symphony Orchestra while still working shows at the Barn.
To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. Stay tuned for a little known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city that's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Meetings on the first Tuesday of the month will take place in one of the city's five council districts to allow city council members to engage more residents. Those meetings will be broadcast the following Saturday at 10 a.m. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month will continue to take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Greensboro Child Response Initiative, or CRI, is a partnership among the Cullen Foundation, the Greensboro Police Department, and dozens of community stakeholders. CRI is a coordinated community response that brings together law enforcement, medical and academic institutions, mental health providers, juvenile justice professionals, child protective services, community service agencies, and other advocates to ensure a coordinated community effort to heal the wounds children suffer from exposure to violence and trauma. Since its inception, the Greensboro Child Response Initiative has served more than 13,000 children and their families, most of whom were witnesses or victims of either domestic violence or assault. Many of these referrals come from Greensboro police officers who respond to incidents of violence involving children. CRI is committed to continuing this partnership. Each year, their commitment to healthy families grows stronger and they are better able to serve our community. To make a referral to CRI, please call the referral line at 336-373-4827. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. Stay with us. Hey, this is Jody. There are a lot of amazing things that Greensboro has to offer, so let's get started. One of the most visited gems in Greensboro is the Greensboro Science Center. The Science Center is an aquarium, museum, and zoo, all in one location and for one low price. The museum features exhibits, interactive shows, and play spaces for children, and an Omnisphere theater, just to name a few. It's the perfect way to spend a day with your family and friends. For information about the Science Center, visit GreensboroScience.org. The Greensboro History Museum celebrates Greensboro's local culture and the city's prominent place in American history. Collections document the many different nationalities and the people who impacted the county's history. With more than 17,000 square feet of stories, the Greensboro History Museum is bigger and better, making it the place to learn about Greensboro. For more information about the museum, visit GreensboroHistory.org. The Greensboro Coliseum Complex consists of eight venues including the 22,000-seat Greensboro Coliseum, which has a long and distinguished history of hosting ACC and NCAA basketball championships as well as concerts by some of the top names in the recording industry. It's both a primary center of activity for the community and a leading economic generator for this region. For a complete list of shows and events, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. The Carolina Theater, originally billed as the Showplace of the Carolinas, opened on Halloween night in 1927 as a 2,200-seat vaudeville theater. Today, the Carolina Theater is a fully functioning performing arts facility. It is home to the Greensboro Ballet, Community Theater of Greensboro, Greensboro Opera, and other local performing arts groups. For more information about shows and events happening at the theater, visit carolinatheater.com. The Greensboro Public Library, in partnership with the community, strives to provide free and equal access to information, foster lifelong learning, and inspire the joys of reading. With eight locations throughout the city, the library has taken a role in building community within our city. Find out where your local library is today by visiting greensborolibrary.org. 
Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has 23 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on the Parks and Recreation Department. Greensboro Parks and Recreation will offer an interactive outdoor classroom and tree preserve with a trail and nature playground at Brightwood Park. This is made possible in part to a $30,000 grant awarded by the National Recreation and Parks Association and the Walt Disney Company. The grant is one of 25 being distributed to communities nationwide as part of a Meet Me at the Park campaign where park and recreation agencies were invited to share their best ideas on increasing access to inclusive play spaces for children and families in underserved communities. Agencies with the most innovative, scalable, and impactful project ideas receive grants to build their projects. There will be an outdoor exploration and learning environment at Brightwood Park, which consists of 13 wooded acres located in northeast Greensboro. The project, designed with input from residents, includes a 6,000-square-foot nature play area with amenities such as tree balance beams, adventure logs, and even musical instruments. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Be sure to check out and download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. From all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.